Oh, you got a good example where it is for sure. <laughs> Hello, uh, welcome Facebook community and Facebook success group. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you to our audience and thank you to Ryan, Jay, uh, Josh and David. Uh, we have the Sierra Interactive crew with us today. We're excited to talk about uh, the integration and how the integration works and hopefully some best practices on how to utilize both of our services and uh, the most leads. So we're excited to kick things off. I want to welcome you, Josh Wald. Uh, he is the Strategic Alliances Manager for Sierra Interactive and David Short, who's the head of product for Sierra. And I know you guys have been working for a while with Ryan, but it's nice to get to know you guys as well. And thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having us. We sincerely appreciate it. Great to be here. Of course. Um, and I just wanted to hop on and welcome everybody, as I always do. But I'm going to let kind of Ryan uh, MC and run the show for us today. But as always, I'll be here in the background. If you guys want uh, to know anything or have any questions, please pop in the comments below. I'll be here reading your comments live and I'll jump on and ask the guys. Feel free to uh, grill Ryan, ask him any questions that you guys have, as always. Uh, we'd love to answer those. So, Ryan, I will let you take lead here. Let me know if you guys need anything. Oh boy, I get to be in charge today. You. Normally, normally I'm just a sidekick. Oh, well, that's a different view. Let me make sure I'm actually in the camera here. Um, yeah, so thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, we're really excited. We did a launch of the Sierra Interactive uh, integration last month. Well, actually about two months ago now. And uh, we've been talking about it to their community a bunch, but we wanted to take the opportunity to bring Sierra over to our community for anybody who is looking for a different CRM and or doesn't have a CRM and wants to know how they can leverage or evaluate data inside of a fully integrated solution. And here are the ins and outs and the, the uh, what Sierra offers and, and what sets them apart from the other uh, CRMs in the marketplace. Before diving into that though, um, I had a quick revaluate story that I wanted to kind of present to everybody uh, over the weekend. I took the opportunity to kind of do some research on uh, my own personal database. So we get asked all the time questions and uh, in the Sierra group, since we're new to them and not everybody in there has heard of us or knows what we're doing. You know, we monitor the life events, the data Ds as we talk about them. And so oftentimes people are like, well, that's great, but like what D went into that score and how does that really relate to movement and, and relate to the world? And so uh, sometimes the best answers to those questions exist right inside of our own lives. And so what I did was, uh, I obviously have a Revaluate dashboard of my own. I opened up that Revaluate dashboard over the weekend and just started digging into uh, some friends of mine who I know have had life events and some scores and just kind of real life, real time, wanted to show you guys some examples in my Revaluate dashboard. Now I have removed all of the personal information so that my friends or who may or may not be watching this uh, don't know whether for sure whether it's them or not that I'm creeping on. Uh, but these are all real people. This is all real data from my own personal uh, dashboard. When I signed up or when I started working at Revaluate two and a half years ago, uh, part of my onboarding process was to import my email contacts from my personal email address. And some of those are really old and some of them are not as old. And uh, it's just kind of going to share my screen and walk you guys through a couple of examples of uh, what we would consider a success. Uh, let me try and do this efficiently here. Uh, are you guys looking at a picture of my dashboard now? And you have to say yes or no because I can't see head nods yeah. behind. <laughs> Cannot see it yet, sir. Oh, really? Aha. We got it. We did it. We're good. All right, cool. Um, so, example number one, just uh, you now, this is a 62 score for anybody who's paying attention. That is uh, not a very likely mover. Um, but we have been talking a lot lately about how very likely movers are the, the top of the top. However, they're are, is that engaged mover category that provides some value and has some interest. So uh, this is a friend of mine's wife, and I was just recently informed by this friend that he was recently informed that his wife is pregnant. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, if you're looking at this score history, this shows you a three-month snapshot leading up to June 4th, which was the day that I took the pictures. So Sunday night was when I was talking to, or when I was going through the dashboard. Uh, my friend found out on June 1st that his wife was pregnant. Now, if you look at the trend line here, you'll see uh, the she was trending pretty stably, like around this 30, 30, dropping below. But I would say this is trending below much interest, right? 
But for some reason, somewhere right around the end of April, beginning of May, there was a spike. And while you can see there's there's uh, like ebbs and flows, the scores don't stay very stable, uh, that spike began a trend of a higher score. I have it on good authority that right around that end of the month in April, beginning of May is when she started to wonder and then eventually found out that she was pregnant and then shared with him about a month later. And so from a data trend line, this is super cool and interesting to see. The other piece of that puzzle is this would mean that she's maybe a month pregnant. And that's why that score of a 62 is important because we are projecting a six month window when they go above an 80. Uh, it, they may not move before, they may not move until after, they may definitely probably wouldn't make any decisions like that until closer to the due date. And so just to really correlate all the story with the, with the data, you know, they found out right around that, that spike, it stabilized around that 60 to 70 point. And now as they get closer to that timeline, presumably that score will spike above the very likely mover uh, threshold. So I thought that was really interesting. Now, here's another thing to take note of for anybody who uh, is really granular and likes to pay attention to the smaller details. Uh, these folks have two children, okay? So it says children, no. Unfortunately, that's wrong. However, the score is still indicative of the life event. So don't get too obsessed over the what we call ancillary data the score is the main thing you want to focus on in the trend line so you can keep track of what's going on in people's lives um so that was the first one and i did a little bit more digging and i came across this is a friend of mine uh who has unfortunately been going through hard times with his wife uh about december time period uh we caught wind that things weren't going so well and um I'm looking at this and their trend line is around that 50. So like, you know, in what we would call that engaged mover category, there's a spike in mid April. I'm not a hundred percent positive what caused that spike, but I can tell you that that spike at the beginning of May would be the finalization of the divorce. And that's why it stabilized at 94 from that point forward. It's also around the time that I noticed that her Facebook post started being her on vacation in Florida for what it's worth. So, you know, Unfortunately, life events aren't always positive, but this is another example of the data showing the story as it's happening. And so being able to track that. Now, ironically, they do not have children, so that is more accurate. Um, this next one, this is a friend of mine who uh, got married back in December and got a new job in between then and now and recently just actually closed on a house over the weekend, last weekend. Uh, and the irony of this whole storyline here is if you see here, they first crossed the threshold to very likely on December 18th of 2021, right around their wedding date. Uh, his wife and him both owned homes. They sold them both. Now here, this is all probably runoff from the wedding. It did dip down and then they must have started getting more serious about looking because right around a month ago, they started looking and boom, they actually closed on their house this past weekend. So again, if you're following the trend lines, here's an example. That's a that's a win. If I was a realtor in this area, I would be very disappointed in myself for not being the one that they worked with because I wasn't monitoring my database. Um, this is another friend of mine who just started a new job for a, a mutual friend. The job is for a company that is in Florida. Uh, he lives in New York, where I live. And so if you watch this, he started the job mid-April. You can see that spike when the data said, oh, new job in a different state. This might be someone who's going to need to move. Now, this one, I'm not sure if he's going to end up selling his home or not because he is working remotely. But just as an example of life events and then sometimes correlating to being a move and sometimes not. One last example, and then I'll stop boring you with my personal life, right? <laughs> um, uh, this is a friend of mine who just recently had a baby. Well, not recently at this point, but had a baby in December. And I wanted to pull this one up because it shows that they crossed the threshold in December when she had the baby. And then you can see along here, it was a high, 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 because new baby, new baby, all of the posts and everything were about new baby. It kind of died off here, probably around. So it looks like that's around four months after the baby. They're like, okay, maybe they're not doing anything. But then this spike here would be when she went back to work off of maternity leave. So it showed as a new job again, and that showed another spike and another reason that they may be needing to move. 
So just as a story for everybody to understand how life events actually, you know, in, impact these scores, I thought it was interesting to share that with everybody um, so that they could see kind of what goes into those from a real life example in my personal life. Um, oh, I couldn't see any of this. So there were questions and everything. <laughs> Katrina, you're muted, so I can't hear a word you're saying. I said we have a couple questions. Can you see Serge's question right here on the screen? Yes. So where the information is sourced on these life change events. Um, so the quick answer is we source from email address as the unique identifier. And we look at a combination of search, spend, social, and public record or government data to provide those scores. So think search engine history, credit card swipes, Amazon purchases, social media, uh, publicly posted social media events across the big four platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, um, and then anything public record oriented that sources back to the email address as that uh, as that unique identifier. Um, and action plans, knowing that score change increase, what number or threshold jump in a score do you suggest we use to trigger an action plan? Yes, that's a great question, Barry. Stay tuned because we're going to get into best practices in just one second. I just want to take the opportunity to give Josh and David here a chance to kind of highlight some of Sierra's functionality. So uh, my first part there was to showing kind of how what we do really works and when you know the people and apply it to what's going on. But uh, the reason that Josh and David are here is because we are now able to push those insights into a new platform in Sierra Interactive. And so I want to give them an opportunity to talk about, you know, guys, what is it about Sierra Interactive that's so appealing that why do people use Sierra Interactive as opposed to any of the other solutions? And then we'll get into how the two pair together from action plans and best practices from there. Yeah. Um, so I think the the main people, the main reason why people choose Sierra is because of of what you're able to do with inside of Sierra, right? So you can kind of think of Sierra as the hub of where someone works on a daily basis and and where they will continue to work out of. So by us bringing in this integration with Revaluate. It's just another addition that we're, we're, we're adding to the hub of Sierra Interactive. Now, there's so many tools to Sierra. We have automations that are really cool. We have action plans that are really cool. We have a dialer. You know, our front end websites are killer. Um, there's so many things that we do that are that are really positive. Um, so by integrating with Revaluate, it's just another tool that we're bringing to our community to enhance the community experience as a whole. Awesome. And so uh, if you were to pick the two biggest game changers, difference makers uh, for Sierra clients, what are the two things that Sierra does like far above and beyond the competition, so to speak? So I think that the automations that we released this year are probably going to be one of the, the biggest features um, that kind of pushes us to kind of like a unicorn within kind of the industry. Other companies have um, automations, but the way that we do it is is just very unique. Um, so it's it's basically like an internal Zapier tool is what I like to think about it. So it's like if this happens or you know this is true, then go ahead and take this specific action. And it could be multiple different things associated with that. So maybe like your status of a lead changes inside of the CRM and they're not on this specific action plan then go ahead and trigger this specific action plan go out. Or in the case of, of Revaluate and Sierra, if that person's score changes with inside of Sierra or Revaluate through the integration, and this particular you know, aspect of this lead is true, then go ahead and take this particular action as well, which is really, 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 really awesome. Um, and I don't think there's many other, com other companies that do it in a similar way than, than we do. Um, additionally, I'd say action plans is probably another feature that, that we're really strong at. Um, we can send multiple action plans. We can send multiple text messages inside of one action plan, which I think is, is starting to become very limited out there um, due to all of the, the different laws that are kind of impacting our industry right now. Um, There's so many things, but I think those two in tandem um, are probably one of the largest feature sets that we have. Um, the dialer is huge. We include a dialer. Um, the websites are awesome. We include PPC management at no additional cost with up to $1,000 um, worth of ad spend. So below $1,000, you're not spending any sort of management fee, which is really cool. Um, and I think that for new agents, that's awesome. It can help them get up and going pretty fast. 
But then even for existing teams, right, they can go ahead and start bringing those leads in. And what's great again about the revalue integration is that we can look at all of those leads and see how likely they are actually to move. This was Sierra, uh, his, um, Sierra built with the individual agent in mind, with the team in mind, with the brokerage in mind. What is the core, uh, your core client base consist of? Is it um, everybody or what is well, your I'd core, say our core client, client base is definitely going to be on the teams. Uh, we definitely promote growth with inside of Sierra. I think that most people come into Sierra, you know, probably with five users or less. But then as they can kind of expand out, they'll have 10, 15, 20 users, 25 users, 30 users. And I think that most of the people that we work with kind of stay as teams. They don't necessarily grow into brokerages as much. Got it. And uh, so you mentioned you got the website and the dialer and the texting and uh, PPC is something I hear a lot in your community. So for people who aren't in your community already, I know you guys uh, have a reputation for being really strong in that area. Uh, is there anything in particular that you can share about what it is that makes you stronger than other solutions in that particular area? Uh, I don't know enough, so I don't know if that's a good yeah. question or not, but I, I hear it a lot about Sierra is that you guys are really good at the PPC game. Yes, yeah, so the front websites are just, they're, they're really built for a conversion perspective, but a lot of that also has to do with the amount of data that we're bringing in from the MLSs as well. Because we inject that into certain pages in order to go ahead and create, you know, different types of campaigns that some of our competitors might, might not be able to actually make. Um, so a lot of it has to do with the amount of data that we're bringing in, a unique set of data that we're bringing in as well. And then with regard to action plans and automations, um, you know, having access to that stuff is one thing, but having direction on how to implement it and what to do with it is, a, is another one. You know, we get asked all the time at Revaluate, this is great, now what, right? Like, this is awesome, but like, what do I do with that information? And so for us, you know, we don't historically get into the providing of marketing materials or collateral because that's not our area of expertise and it, we don't want to be competitive with our partnerships. Um, but uh, do you guys have kind of cookie cutter pre-done stuff? Obviously people can do their own, but is there guidance and is there like available stuff for people who just sign up? So we have some action plans that are built into the system. Um, but really what's cool about Sierra is, is this platform partner network that we have. So we work with a lot of different companies to actually go ahead and import action plans, tags, smart filters, automations. And what's amazing about that too, is it's continuing to grow as well. So, you know, we have our own set, but then we work with people that this is all they do. And this is all they do every single day. Um, and I think that that's really unique to us because nobody else really has these implementation partners. Um, that are helping them, you know, work inside of their CRM, figure out how to convert in the best way inside of their CRM. And on top of that, find somebody who they identify with the most from a conversion strategy perspective, because there's so many different ways to do it. You know, you could have the A, B, C, D, you know, filter thought process where you're following up with your best leads, or you could do it in a completely automated way where you're doing it based off of um, behavioral activity with the website and, and maybe non-actual activity from your agents. Um, so there's, it's, there's a, it's really unique that we have these different partners that can speak to conversion in so many different ways and bring in different perspectives, which I think is, is something awesome and unique to Sierra. Yeah, I love you guys have a really engaged community as well, which is something that uh, is an undersold value prop in a lot of ways and a lot of different for a lot of different solutions that like if somebody does sign up, I know from being in your Facebook group and seeing things and, and how things go down there, like you never have to feel like you're on Lonely Island. You can go in there and you can get answers to things and directions and kind of read best practices. You know, we do some of that in our group, but at a much smaller scale. Most of it's us providing uh, webinars like this or best practices that are shared with us. But you guys have uh, capitalized on that community at, at a scale that is really cool and encouraging for, I imagine, for people who are just signing up. For me, just starting working with you, it was cool to see because we can get feedback so quickly from people who are uh, leveraging different things and questions that come up and et cetera. Um, and that's what's great about our client base too, like you said. I think that people that come to Sierra have been with so many other competitors in the past, but they realize that once they come over to Sierra, they can take what they've, what they've been doing, but fully exploit it more so than they ever have before. And then with Revaluate, that's just another addition 
to kind of enhance, you know, what we're doing over at Sierra. And I think that it's, it's, it's allowing us to, to have a lot of growth and grow in so many more ways than, than just as a company, but you know, what we do to service our community, what we do to enhance our product. And there's continuous things that we do to enhance our product, which is really awesome. But I will, I will let you continue to speak, sir. <laughs> no, I was going to say, David, we brought you along for the ride, not to be the uh, silent partner, but you're the head of product. So I think that it makes sense if uh, if you want to kind of show us under the hood a little bit, and then we can use that uh, Sierra platform to kind of talk a little bit about what Barry was asking about, exact approaches and score changes, and where leveraging these two systems together really kind of pours rocket fuel on the whole thing. Sure. Yeah. Let me uh, share my screen off and I can kind of show a couple screens just really quick kind of to build on what Josh was saying. And I know we were talking mostly about actual features and kind of what sets us apart. But another key thing that does is the transparency and how we communicate what we're working on and when it will be available and released uh, just via our uh, calendar, our product roadmap all of the webinars we're doing and documentation we make available ahead of time so we can allow you know our clients to hit the ground running. So I uh, just wanted to kind of note that. I'm gonna go ahead and share off my screen. You guys let me know if it's... Uh, it's been really working. cool since you guys have launched the, uh, the partnership and the integration. We get people showing up at our website like, oh, I got an email from Sierra. Like, uh, can you tell me more about this? I'm like, yeah, you guys have a really good communication network. People take your emails seriously. They don't go to spam and get ignored, uh, which you can't say about everything. That's for sure. Uh, sure. Katrina, can you make exactly. that thing full screen? There you go. Perfect. Is this full screen? Can you guys see everything okay? It is now, yep. All right, great. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of walk through a couple of these screens. It's really intuitive, really simple to set up. We're at the Revaluate dashboard. This is available here under the gear, as are many things. Um, this is also where you're, you'll do the initial setup and activation of the integration if you're interested. When you come to this page, um, initially there'll be information uh, about pricing, about what the functionality looks like. There'll also be a video to kind of go in a little more detail about how the scores are sourced, um, et cetera. And then from there, we give you some really handy tools uh, to determine which leads you want to opt into the integration. We do suggest, and I know we're going to get to best practices, so I won't go into it too much, uh, opting in uh, all of your leads, but you can use smart filters and criteria uh, to do a subset, um, then kind of just basic information, complete transparency, again, about what the pricing looks like based on your lead opt-in, what that's going to be on a monthly basis. You know, it's really important, again, the transparency, but also not to have a lot of variation, kind of know, know what you're going to be paying. So transparency in general from an activity perspective as well, something we've really focused on in the integration. Um, if I can interrupt for two seconds, one thing I want to highlight real quick is um, I really love that you guys built this dashboard so that it also mirrors uh, what you would see in our dashboard as far as the categories and the, and the contact counts. So for anybody who uh, is watching this and is a Revaluate client but not a Sierra client, uh, you don't lose the visibility to the very likely movers, the engaged movers, and the not engaged movers. Um, because you're leveraging it inside of here. So you don't actually have to go back to our dashboard ever if you're a Sierra client, because you're getting all of the useful information right in front of you, including that timeline that they've built here so that you can track over time, the same things that I was just showing you with those contacts in my personal dashboard. Uh, they've basically replicated a lot of that functionality right inside of Sierra so that you get everything you need in one stop without having to go back and forth. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point, Ryan. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, and really quick, just to note before I continue to go into some of the uh, data that we're seeing here and some of the tiles and features, uh, keep in mind, this is test data. So that's kind of one of the reasons you're seeing how these trends are moving. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm in here. You probably know that I am a very likely mover, so that's something to consider. 
but just keep in mind, again, as we go through this, this is test data. Um, one of the key things is after the fact, we do allow you really easily to go ahead and opt in the rest of your leads in bulk if you'd like. And I'm gonna show you a couple methods to do that. Right here, also, again, back to the transparency, is quick access to an activity log. Uh, so what you can see is literally when, who, and what happened. Happened. So we're looking at a bunch of opt-ins here, opt-out. There's a lot of activity here, again, because uh, this is our sample data and we want to do a lot, uh, see what's going on. You can see me opted in a lot of leads at one point back in April. Uh, then down oh. here... <laughs> That's cool right. from a team management stance, David. I didn't real, I hadn't seen that before. But like, if I'm a team leader and I activate this for my team, I can see if like one person on my team is dumping in like fifty thousand contacts and I don't want them to. I can be like, wait a minute, you uh, and manage it at the user level for the activity. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. Just kind of again visibility to what's going on and who's doing it and that kind of ties back into won't get too into it but back into lead routing and how you set up your rules based on kind of what you're seeing here is kind of one of the data points that you could use when setting those up um so on to let's go ahead and move to the lower left what you're going to see again is trend lines here it's not a ton of movement again because this is all test data and i'm only showing a short period of time but what's really cool about this is we also built the hover state. So you can see the details versus kind of just trying to guesstimate uh, what the data looks like and what these lines represent. Then over here, we have all of the tiles regard in regards to the not engaged, the engaged, and the very likely, along with your total lead count. So you can kind of see what's going on here if you don't have a full opt-in. I'm going to come back to this one really quick. I just want to touch on the billing piece again, really, really important to have transparency, to be aware of what your billing are going to be billed. Um, and also to see your past bill trend as maybe you continue to opt in or grow your business, get more leads, et cetera. Uh, so you have visibility here. We're going to show up to four months. And again, what's nifty is over time, we have a little, again, activity log on the billing front. So you'll have kind of indefinite access to all of the data and see kind of how it's trending on that front. Uh, during Just because I know you can't see this window when you're on that window, um, we two things to point out here too is uh, for anyone who is a Sierra client, the billing is handled right through Sierra for Revaluate. So for anyone who wasn't aware of that or anybody who's not currently a Sierra client, um, it's all one stop shop right through Sierra. So all the billing, that's why they have this as a baked in piece is that you're not paying two separate vendors. Uh, the partnership allows it all to be managed right through Sierra and you just one stop shop pay it all in one place. And then uh, Delancey asked a question around opting in, which was if you start off by opting in all the leads, does that maintain opting in new leads as they get generated or do they have to go back and then opt in the new leads as well? We can set it up um, so they can be routed if you'd like. Uh, there's also bulk activity that I'll show you from the lead dashboard and you could manually opt in one by one. So it really, we just kind of try to provide as many options as you'd like based on how you want to proceed going forward um, after the initial setup. And opt you can put it through automations as well. <clears throat> so if you want only a certain type of lead to go in um, for all of your new leads, you can have those specific leads go in. There's there's literally so many different ways to get the leads in there or not and get leads in to revaluate as well. It's it's up to you because you have the full control. Yeah, that's another really great point, just how we built this and tied it in with automations. And I know we'll go into best practices again, so I won't touch too much on this, uh, but I know Barry asked earlier in regards to kind of what that threshold should be um, and then kind of how to communicate. So the automation piece is literally one of the features within automations tied to this allows you to set what that score should be and then trigger some kind of action. Um, yeah. You don't see it right here. So it's really great. Thanks for mentioning it, Josh. So <laughs> just in case I would have forgot it. Um, and then again, just kind of back to the billing overview wording here. We also have it during setup. Anytime you do bulk opt-in or individual opt-in, 
will show you how many leads exist and currently opted in, pricing, what you're adding, and any pricing change. Uh, just again, really easy to know exactly what's going on on that front. Um, like I said, I'm just gonna pop back to these tiles really quick. One of, one of the things we built in here, um, and I'm gonna see if this works. I haven't, um, I'm not too familiar with the screen sharing process in this program. <laughs> Uh, so let's see if this goes, but you can launch to the lead dashboard and have it pre-filtered specifically uh, by one of these statuses. It'll also show you when you go in the hover state what the score ranges, just in case you know you can't remember, um, just something to, to remind you at any given time when you're on here here analyzing that's data. really really that's cool that hover state thing there um and i think that really speaks to the first question that uh, barry had which was the score changes um those three categories for, for our the way that our system was originally built those are the three categories that we have confidence in those tiers of scores so it was built more of a stoplight mechanism where uh, you know both uh, when they cross a threshold into one of those three categories is where we would recommend some sort of action. Now, we were just looking at some live examples earlier of people who kind of pivoted from like a 20 point jump based on a different life event. And so there is some of that, you know, anecdotal evidence, but as a very beginner starting point, you want to use the thresholds that move them into those categories as the thresholds to transition your messaging and transition your automations and having that Kind of mouse over to remind you of what those score thresholds are you, know, you come here you say okay very likely that's 80 so anyone who goes above an 80 activate whatever this plan is or anybody who's between in uh 40 and a 79 i want them to have this plan and below a 40 have this plan and in an ideal scenario you you've got uh, automations and action plans built out for all three of those categories and they can automatic automatically transition between the three as they cross those thresholds so that your entire marketing funnel is on autopilot and you can focus on the sales portion of it once it's built up and and kind of mapped out for you i have a question is there a certain specific amount of time that they should be as a very likely mover before you reach out to them yeah that's a great question too so like here's what you're going to run into. And these are the kinds of things that we want to be very, you've talked about transparency. We try to be very transparent and upfront with some of the kind of level setting things in the beginning of an account. Uh, when you activate an account with Revaluate, there are going to be very likely movers right out of the gate. And in that group, there are going to be people that you're going to get them on the phone and they're going to say, it's so crazy you just called me because I was just thinking about doing blah, blah, blah. Those are not the norm. Those are the outliers. Those are the ones that we love when they happen because people become raving fans out of the gate. However, um, as not the norm, what we also will see in that initial batch is people who you're too late for. They already moved. They're already listed. They're already working with somebody. Um, that's because, frankly, we started today and we didn't start six months ago, so we weren't able to get you first to the table. Going forward, when they advance, that's an initial touch point trigger. Um, now, that's not a, hey, do you want to list your house with me trigger? It's not a, hey, do you have a real estate need trigger? I mean, I've heard every good, bad, and indifferent thing out of ISAs and agents' mouths when they make phone calls over the years. But it is an uh, area of interest where you should be having a fact-finding conversation to see what life event is going on with them by asking the right questions and then setting an expectation for a consistent, persistent nurture as you go down the road because you still may be two to three months out of them making a purchasing or a selling decision. But by being there and staying in touch and communication and providing value to them through the automations and your own active efforts, it will make it so that they don't become somebody else's lead or somebody else's listing by just staying in the room, so to speak. So I would recommend, yes, that initial touch point should be as soon as they transition, uh, but bearing in mind that that's not always going to be the contact that gets you the deal the same way it's not always the contact that gets you the deal with a lead, right? Uh, you know, 2% of your leads are gonna convert, the rest of them happen over time. These are resurfacing those over time, so making that persistent, consistent nurture and touch points. So with that being said, you know, who, who, who do you think you should opt in? Is it everybody? Is it just your sphere? Is it your closed clients? Is it, is it your new clients? Um, what do you think, you know, the average person should do when they're integrating with Revaluate? 
my first answer to that question is always, why would you try to outsmart a system that's built to be smarter than you? Um, so yeah, if there's a living, breathing human being on the other end of that email address, then that's an opportunity at the right time. So opt them in. Now that is obviously a little bit of an exaggeration, hyperbolous, if you will. Uh, but the real answer is if you're not going all in, if you don't want to know about everybody, because that's just too much, you can't eat the elephant all at once, right? Uh, then what you can do is work from the lowest hanging fruit backwards. So obviously your sphere and past clients are people who know you and have either worked with you in the past or you have a relationship with. I always recommend starting, if you're starting small, start with the people you would be most upset with if they worked with somebody else and you ran into them at the grocery store at Thanksgiving. Uh, those are the people you need to be monitoring because you don't want to miss those opportunities. Uh, then work your way ba uh, backwards. Like your old leads, you spent money on those. <laughs> you, you paid to have that contact information. So you should try your best to convert them over time. There's all sorts of different systems out there that talk about long-term nurture, and I'm sure you guys do as well in your own webinars and so forth. So knowing the right time to strike is a, is a strong value with old leads. And then if you're really trying to go gangbusters at it, then, then you expand it to the have not met sectors, the cold calls, the farming efforts and so forth. So I kind of want to touch on one of Barry's questions, um, but what's a good approach to, to reach out to these people? You know, because maybe they're a sphere of influence and you're calling them every quarter. They're on your newsletter. Um, maybe they go to a couple of events, but then all of a sudden you see their, their score change to a 92 because they're having a divorce or whatever it might be. What are some things that you can say to these people as to why you're reaching out, which is a little bit more random than you have been for the past three years when you've called them quarterly or on their birthday, et cetera? Yeah, great question. I mean, so the the... In the early days when Revaluate was a, a, a fledgling company and the whole concept was very new, it was designed to be uh, a trigger or a nudge to reach out to the people that you know in your database that uh, to ask them to join you for a drink or a cup of coffee, whichever is your forte, right? Because uh, if you're just working with Sphere and people that you know, it's not random, it's not out of the ordinary to say, hey, you know, it's been a while, we should catch up, join me for a drink or a cup of coffee, depending on time of day and inclination. Um, now we've expanded a lot and evolved and grown and databases have ballooned. And so that's not always the approach that's going to work, but it is very much a, so if it's someone in your database who you have been regularly marketing or branding to, uh, then the outreach should seem organic when you reach out. So you can't say, my artificial intelligence told me that you're looking to sell your home because that's creepy and nobody wants to hear that. Although mm -hmm. I do hear stories of people saying that and it working, heaven forbid. <laughs> but it is definitely not something I would recommend. It's just, you know, every once in a while, uh, blind squirrels or whatever that saying is. But um, so what your outreach efforts should be is, to, and it's very subjective to where the lead came from, right? So if you're looking at a lead that came from your website, say it's a PPC lead on your website, they came to your site, you got their information because they filled in a form fill and it's been six months since you talked to them, then your outreach is just, hey, you know, it's been six months since we spoke. I just wanted to check in on how things were going. Did you end up buying that house or selling that house, depending on where they came from? So you don't want to shut your brain off and just dial for dollars with these because they're not leads. So you can't use the same approach on everyone. But what they are is surfacing opportunity within your existing base. So whatever your normal outreach effort would be to your database, it's that. It's just that with more confidence and with the approach of, I'm not calling to list your home today. I'm calling to see how things are going and check in on you know, life in general. And lots of these uh, people who use a, uh, I used to uh, teach Ford as the, uh, the motivation principle, right? Family, occupation, recreation, or dreams. And when question-based selling, you're trying to identify what their motivation would be for moving. Is it family, occupation, recreation, or dreams? And in my ISA trainings, we would run I had a game that I worked up where I would write on a bunch of slips of paper and uh, motivation, a pain, and a secret. And we would drop them in a hat and everyone would pick one out. And then you would ask questions until you identified pain, motivation, and secret. And if you didn't get it, start over and just keep learning how to craft a conversation and ask the right questions so that you're 
identifying what's going on in their life. Because the life events we're looking for are the types of things that people are going to want to share with a trusted advisor if you ask the right questions. Uh, there's something scrolling on my screen here. Uh, yeah, we got a couple more questions. Barry just asked another one. <clears throat> um, he wants to know if Revaluate could possibly create action plans um, that could potentially include a mix of phone scripts, email templates, and template text that they could import into Sierra. Um, I think we would definitely have a conversation about that and see what that would look like. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think we'll take it offline and we'll figure it out, Barry. Um, we have some scripts that we've put together, just <laughs> generic stuff that we're happy to share with you guys um, as a resource. Um, when it comes to the uh, skeleton of an action plan, so not the actual uh, marketing materials, but the cadences and such, happy to put together some forms of what people have done in the past that has worked that you could load in, and then you guys load in your own marketing materials. Um, we are working with a content partner to put together more uh, generic 10 touch uh, drip campaign that will be available to evaluate customers. Uh, and if you want it customized for you, that partner is offering to have an upsell opportunity for people who want to customize that's in the works. So I can't tell you who, what, where, or when yet, but coming soon. Um, and so yes, Barry, in answer to your question, we want to be able to provide as much of that stuff as we can based on the experience of our clients and the feedback that we get. So the more feedback you give and the more questions you ask, the higher we can prioritize that. Um, I think both of us are operating, uh, both of our teams are operating from the standpoint of this is new and we want to do everything we can to make it as good as possible. Uh, and I, I really appreciate what you guys put in on the Sierra side before even being willing to go live with it. It was frustrating for me as the partnership guy having to wait so long to get it started. But I think that the product you pushed out uh, from an integration standpoint out of the gate was really impressive. And I know you guys have been working from the tech side to improve it as much as possible. So I'm, apparently my second energy drink kicked in because I'm talking fast and rambling <laughs> a little bit. But um, but yes, Barry, uh, more to come. And I'm happy to share with you what we have already. Maybe I can drop it in the Sierra group for you guys. Uh, just some files that we have that we share with our clients so that you've got them in your back pocket, at least as a starting point and growing from there. Um, go ahead. Ryan, can, oh, sorry, Josh. I just have a couple more from the, that people have asked us. Um, does Revaluate work in Canada? No, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, Canadians take their data privacy more seriously than Americans. <laughs> That's the, the bottom line. Uh, unfortunately, today we do not, I do not have any sort of timeline or expectation of that being any time in the near future. Unfortunately, I apologize to our Canadian listeners. <laughs> yeah. And sorry about that, Serge. Um, but if you have any emails, you guys can, you guys can email me at josh at sierrainteractive.com. Uh, there are a couple more questions. Um, how do you give others on your team an option to add leads to evaluate? So if you're working outside of Sierra, we give you the option to either have manager level users opt in leads, um, or you can also go ahead and have agent level users opt in leads as well. Um, so if you want to send an email to support uh, or send an email to me and I can kind of walk you through how to go ahead and set that up. Um, I think that is it, I believe. I believe those are all the questions we actually have. If you guys do have some more questions, though, just, just send them all over to us. Right. Can I ask one? Since we're doing <laughs> some QA. <laughs> um, so essentially, you know, it's it's nice to understand what the score looks like at any point in time, but can you talk a little bit about how the real value of the integration comes from watching the trends? Um, and then taking the appropriate action uh, regarding those trends over a period of time? Yeah, so, uh, yes, I think that uh, it's it, 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 it harkens back to the beginning of this whole call where, like, you'll see the scores are, they, they move, right? Like, we ingest data from so many different data providers, and some come every day, and some come once every 30 years, and so the scores are always kind of in flux, some more than others, just depending on where people are in their life cycle. Um, so you definitely want to track the overtime trends because uh, you'll see, you know, little variations and they'll flutter back and forth a little bit. And so like on our side, we mute, once they cross a threshold, uh, 
if they go back below and then back up, we mute the tra the transitions so that it doesn't get overwhelming. Uh, I don't think we mute it through the integration. So that's something we might want to think about as we're figuring all this out with the integration. But um, yeah, you know, uh, you want if you see somebody is always al shooting along like 20 to 30, and then one day they spike but and then go down, but they their trend line is higher. That means that something made their trend line higher, and that might be something worth paying attention to. And so, you know, the that's like the next level stuff. Like if you're so if you're a person just getting started, get started focusing on the score. But as you get deeper and you fit in, you like once you've optimized that level, the next optimization level is absolutely tracking the trends because they definitely will you know, fluctuate, but stay around a certain area and then spike and then settle on a new plateau and being able to monitor those plateaus in the in the Sierra with the overtime graph that you guys built is a huge value add for the people that are doing that. Um, and being able to know, okay, this is when they first spiked. Uh, and even if they fall down, then they spike up again. Now, okay, so maybe that was the beginning of something happening, but now that they've leveled out, that's when you wanna really like pay attention. Um, trends are always more important than individual scores in any data world, right? So we definitely, you want to pay attention to those overtime trends for sure. Great. Uh, Donna, that. the answer to your question is, I believe, yes, they can see that on the individual contacts in Sierra as well, right? You've got it so that they can pull up that graph for the individual contacts. Yep. Yeah. And I can hop over there real quick. One one thing, just Ryan, while you were talking and answering that last question that came to mind, just to note uh, for all those new users that want to sign up, um, is that upon initial activation on the reevaluate side, um, Ryan, if you want, you can go into it or I can kind of show the individual lead trend is so much data is sourced from so many different locations. Uh, that it takes, what, about 24 to 48 hours to pull all of that data and start getting uh, your scores in. Is that right, Ryan? Yeah, so we we say that it, just count the first 48 hours. The first 48 hours, they jump up, they jump down. We're ingesting all that data. It's analyzing, compare, contrasting. So we don't call them reliable until that 48-hour mark. And I believe we don't feed them back into Sierra until 48 hours after the activation. It's a loose 48 because technically the, the sync runs overnight, but just as a general best practice, assume the first 48, you're not gonna have any answers. And that goes for new contacts as well as new database. So like as new people feed in, don't expect immediate response back from our network. It's gonna take that first 48 to normalize. Um, I think the other part is to, uh, Focus on the high scores more, uh, focus on the opportunity in the high score more than the low score not correlating with your existing business. And what I mean by that is we miss, like I'm never going to sit here and tell everybody we capture every mover because if we captured every mover, there would, we would have to dilute the pond so much that we would have a lot more misses than hits. Um, our philosophy is we want to make sure that the people in the very likely mover category fall within that 19.5% uh, confidence level so that you're, you're, sw you're fishing in a small bucket. Uh, but the rest of the automations and things that you already have set up in Sierra, we recommend leave everything the way it is right now as far as your general everyday activities and then focus additional energy on the high scores so that if you've got a listing that's a low score, it's okay. You know, people move for reasons other than life events, believe it or not. Some people just wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to move tomorrow. Uh, and, and some people use different emails and all other reasons. But those high scores are the ones that are deserving of the most attention. And after that first 48 over the trend lines, you'll see, uh, you know, over time, once it's built, the system can begin to really run on autopilot and, and really add more time and more value to your day. That's great. We are, I am very long winded. We are way over a half an hour, but I don't care because my next call doesn't start for seven minutes, but um, you wanted to show something. I don't want us to run out of time. So show that trend line before we uh, do run out of time. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I know we're, I know we're pushing long and pushing up. So I'll try to try to make this quick and just in case we have a little more Q and A that, that we want to tackle. Uh, I'm going to hop over here. This is an individual lead that I accessed via the lead dashboard. If we have time, I want to show some pretty cool functionality here as well. Uh, and essentially what you can see here is your opt-in. 
Um, you can see your trend information, your current score. You can see trend over time with that nifty well, hover. You can't see your, your screen anymore, David. You'd have to re reshare your screen. Um, Technology, guys. Sorry about that. Can you see me navigating to the dash? Negative. Now we just see you. Just me. Oof, that's rough. Um, <laughs> I mean, the three of us, which is not any better, but. <laughs> let, me, let me give this one a go again. Sorry about that. While he's figuring out screen share, Delancey, uh, you don't need to worry about that per se because the scores don't even feed back into Sierra until after that, after they've normalized. So you don't have to set a pause on the automations in that first 48 uh, because the scores won't push until they're ready to push. So we incubate them in our dashboard before sending them back into Sierra. Great. Now we got it. You guys see it? Ooh. Okay, I guess I gotta yeah, stop and restart. Time. Um, yeah, so what we have here is within an actual lead. Uh, hopefully, I'll get a minute to not share and then reshare my screen and show you a couple other uh, pieces of functionality. But you can see the trend line over time. We have the really cool hover. I really, this is a piece of functionality just in general that I love. We can see the score and the status as well as kind of percentage movement. My absolute favorite part of this, again, just playing back to kind of that transparency, the activity log we saw on the dashboard too. Um, and again, you can see how frequently this data is sourced. Um, we can see the information here. And we can see the trend here as well. So we have full, full ease of access, whether it's kind of in this data format, whether it's in a graphical format, uh, whichever you prefer. I'm kind of a visual, visual guy, so I, I prefer this view. Uh, but it's just all about visibility transparency here as well. So my question is, has any of you asked Ben what happened that made him spike? Because I noticed he's in my database too. I was, gonna, <laughs> I, I was like, oh, I see someone's a very likely mover, but I don't know what's going on in his life. <laughs> I haven't asked. Uh, <laughs> like, hey, hey, we're, hey, we're creeping on you, boss. <laughs> I know, right? He's gonna he's gonna message me after this and ask to opt him out. So, <laughs> hey, oh, man, why are you moving? <laughs> right? Can you guys see my screen now as well? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So again, if this is active, uh, you're gonna see a new revaluate score uh, column here. One other really cool thing is this work with assign leads and pom leads, so you can kind of drum up some some old business as well as Ryan mentioned a little bit. Um, you can activate directly in here. Uh, you can also take bulk actions, um, whatever that might be, you know, your, your score, your filtering. And again, you can navigate directly to pre-filtered views of this by the score, um, the, the status and the associated score range from the dashboard and just save it off. It's really kind of any way you want to have the visibility easily access this uh, from the dashboard. And we talked about the automations a bit as well. Uh, so just kind of spread across the whole system, the action plan to everything. Uh, but I just wanted to give a super quick look here. Again, I know we're pushing up on time. So uh, let's check if we have any more questions. I'm going to stop sharing off one more time. I will say the one thing that I've heard a couple of people suggest from a uh, improved functionality is uh, sorting by that column. I've heard a couple of people say that uh, they, is, unless that's not true anymore, can they sort that column of scores from top to bottom? Or uh, I know they can usually show the filter. And that's why I tell people is you can filter, so you're only looking at the top anyway. Um, sure. But sorting is one function that I heard a couple of people ask about in the last couple of weeks talking to the Sierra people. So that's for oh, you, Mr. Product feedback. Guy. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I haven't heard it yet, but I, I, that's great passing that through. Uh, I don't see anything new unless Katrina has anything that I didn't see. Nope. Nope. Oh, there's that 24 to 48 hour, uh, 72 hour grace period on, on automations based on what Ryan was just explaining on the data sourcing. Uh, so yeah, that, that's, that's kind of a, a good practice. Cool. So I think we are right at time, which is perfect. We did. We pulled it off in 58 minutes. <laughs> um, I believe Katrina 
are we gonna this is on our facebook page right so if anyone wants to go back and review anything that we talked about it'll it'll be staying there if i understand correctly and we usually load it up on our youtube page as well so if anybody wants to find it we do have a evaluate youtube page um, if you're not already in our Facebook group, we do have our Revaluate Facebook group, Revaluate uh, was a success group, is that what it's called? Yep. Um, so feel free to join us there if you're a client or even if you want to just kind of peruse what kind of things we put in there. We do weekly live streams. We do these types of things with our partners to give people visibility to solutions that pair well with Revaluate and that are really putting legs to what we have going on. Uh, with our data because data on its own is not as useful as data with a good strategy for implementation. Um, so feel free to reach out to myself if you have evaluate questions. Josh, if you have uh, a need for Sierra, I presume, should they reach out to you if they're interested in uh, finding out more about Sierra? Sierra, you can reach out to me. I'll get you connected with one of the, the sales team members that we have. Um, you can also ask me any sort of questions about the revaluate integration and I'll either get with David or I'll get with Ryan or I might know the answer already. Um, so just, you know, just any questions that you guys have, um, ask me, ask Brian, um, that we're here to help out. Josh, really quick on that question. You want to talk a little bit and tell me a little bit about kind of the, um, the discount that we're running right now, which will then oh, yeah. in perpetuity so, we've extended. We've extended the discount until May, until June 15th, I believe. Um, where it's a 20% discount. Normally, inside of Sierra, it would be $50 a month per 1,000 leads. Until June 15th, it's going to be $40 per 1,000 leads. That is the discount that we've been running, the initial promotion, but it will be over on June 15th. After that, it will go back to $50 per 1,000 leads. However, if, you opted, if you've opted any leads in prior <clears throat> to the 15th, you will continue to receive that discount on said leads. Get your Landing father's promotion on all leads. <laughs> on all leads, yes. As long as you keep the integration on, that's in perpetuity. So check so it out. Grow your there. business, and it'll grow with you. <laughs> so just make sure you have one lead inside of inside of Revaluate inside of Sierra, and you are good to go. <laughs> make sure you have one million leads. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, guys, thank you again so much for joining us today. This was great. I think we covered a lot of good material uh, and, and I'm sure we'll get feedback from people with questions and so forth. So it's nice yep. seeing you all. I am going to go hop on my next call and I will talk to you all soon. Awesome. Thank you guys Thanks. so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.